So when we're ready to mount the samples, we remove the container. We have holders. We have clean, short stem stubs. And we need a double-sided carbon sticky adhesive or you can also use a liquid silver paste, uh, notably if you use the silver liquid paste, you will need to let those samples dry for at least 24 hours before using the sputter coat on those samples. So with gloved hands, uh, we will remove the number of stubs that we need. Today we need two. We will label the underside of the stub with the specimen name. Uh, this is a very important step. Uh, if you forget, then if your stubs were to get out of order after you've mounted your sample, it would become very difficult to determine which is which. So now that those are labeled, I will secure them in the holder. Ah, yes. So, here is a long one and here is a short one. We actually use primarily the short ones. The long ones can be used with our system but require uh, a bit of loading modification, so it's best to avoid the longer ones. We want to work as quickly as possible with the samples out in ambient air because we want, since we've spent the time drying the samples, we want to avoid any additional humidity uh, going back into the sample prior to going on the SEM. I will lift up the double-sided tape and apply it to the edge and then using the flat end I will apply pressure to make sure it makes good contact with the stub. Leaving the cover on it until I'm ready to apply the sample. operate the, the Cressington sputter coater. We have samples that have been mounted that are now ready to be coated. Um, currently we are using a 6040 gold palladium target that will sputter the metal onto the sample. Um, that target can be exchanged. We also have a chromium one but there are some uh, additional modifications to the instrument that need to be made in order to exchange and the exchange is also a bit of a process so that will those other features would either be discussed one-on-one -on -one or will be followed up with an additional video training. The first thing we want to do is lift the cover uh, which has uh, the target blocker that can be used when you are ready to operate. You will want this in the position to where it's no longer blocking the target. We then also want to remove the chamber glass very carefully. We do not have a replacement and the unit will not operate without that. We want to make sure that the cable on the inside is not in the way of the rotation. We'll do that again too uh, before we start the final process of coating the samples. We want to inspect the o-ring. This would be a good time to use the air can if needed. Um, it looks very nice today. Uh, I will change the angle of the stage by moving this lever and then twisting to bring it to a level plane and in the process I will tighten that down again and again I'm just going to move the cable out of the way so that it's not catching any of the samples. You want to make sure that your samples are secure. Um, since they are on this carbon tab, 
Uh, while they may be decently secure, you don't want to shake them because you probably could shake them off. So we'll do just a gentle tilt and we'll very carefully load these onto the sample holder. In the bottom of this unit, there's actually an open hole. So dropping something into the bottom of the chamber is very dangerous. If that should occur, please contact Kathleen or myself and we will assist you in retrieving the sample out. It may require a bit of disassembly and it may prohibit us from sputtering on that particular day. However, if that dropped sample were to remain, it would cause the tump to be destroyed. If, if orientation is easier by rotating the stage, the rotation is in the knob, uh, you can do that to place your sample uh, more easily at a better angle. Uh, this holder will hold up to 24 samples. And I just like to make sure that those are level. With the sample loaded, you want to go ahead and make sure that you've angled your stage back and then secure that angle and to a locked position there. Start your rotation slowly, making sure that the cable is out of the way and can't um, interfere with the rotation of your sample very gently. And then if wanted, you can increase the rotation of the speed. Uh, the, the less secure you feel like your samples are, the lighter rotation I would recommend. Then you replace the lid, the, excuse me, the chamber glass, and then lower the lid and open the shutter and making any slight adjustment. Once it's in the correct position, you'll hear an audible reduction in noise during the pump down process. The next thing we'll do is turn on the argon gas. We use a specialty tank, which is green. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll completely open this nozzle. We do not want to make any adjustment to this as it is set to the correct uh, pressure for the unit. Once it's open all the way, back off about a quarter of a turn. We will then turn on the power for the main unit. And there was that, that quick reduction in noise in the pump that indicates that the chamber glass and the lid are in the appropriate configuration. And then we will turn on the MTM box, which is this box right here. It's the thickness controller. On the MTM box, we will need to set the coating thickness. We will do so by depressing the terminator by holding it down. And you'll see it's set to five nanometers. We have to hold that and then start making our adjustments by using the arrows up or down. Today we will use 10 nanometers of coating. We will press the terminator button again until the LED lights up. This has now changed this to read T1. We also want to zero our total life, and so I'll depress that button to reset that to zero. And then we will remove the shutter from the target. On the main unit, the auto should select MTM, so the thickness controller. And the timer current should be labeled T1 or showing T1. I always make sure that we are in the ready status 
and we are basically ready to get underway. We will then press cycle stop, which is in the auto. Everything else is done by the instrument. The instrument will shut off when it's complete and then uh, or the coating will shut off when it's complete and then we will go through the, the shutdown procedure in a moment. 